Right, so hello and welcome to our session for week three. Today we're going to look at some tactical puzzles. But before we go to the puzzles, we're going to look at how we solve the puzzles. How would you solve tactics? Now, first thing you should do is you should look for forcing moves. Forcing moves being checks, captures, and attacks in that order. So you start by looking for checks. If they don't work, then you look at captures, and then you look at attacks. Another thing you should keep in mind is that loose pieces drop off. Always look for pieces that are undefended or insufficiently defended, and try to exploit them. Right, so let's go to the puzzles themselves. Sorry. Right, so let's start with this puzzle. It's white to move. Any suggestions? Uh, white to move, pawn to e6. Does anyone ha want to have a go or something? Yeah, I agree with what he said, maybe pawn to pawn e6. Sorry? I, I agree with what um I think Isaac said, uh, pawn e6 maybe. Yeah, that's right. You can take c6 and queen takes f4. The point is, after you've played a move e6, you're opening this line, and then you can take the queen on the next move. So once again, the way you find these moves is you look for the forcing moves first. So you start with checks, and since we can, and we can easily see that e6 just wins the queen. All right. Let's move on to the next puzzle. Puzzles are very consistent. Right. So here it's black to move and win. Black. So any suggestions? Oh yeah, um, this one is uh, knight to e2 check. King h1. Um, this is where you uh, set the queen. Set the queen on h2, then you check the rook. Yep, exactly. Knight e2 check, king h1. And now queen takes h2, a beautiful move. Now the king takes h2, rook h6, the knight controls. These two squares and it's checkmate. So again, it's quite a forcing sequence. And if you look for checks, you should be able to find this. Now, next puzzle is going to be a bit harder. This is actually from my own game. And here I played the move g4. And now it's black to move. So try to find the cleanest way to finish white off.
So once again, try to start with the four sing moves. Um, I, I I was thinking of, uh, knight takes g four. Okay. Uh, then I I'm not sure. It depends on what whether white takes with the bishop. So if if it takes, then I'll play queen to g six. But I'm not sure whether that was strong enough. Well, if knight takes g four, bishop takes g four, queen g six, you're attacking my bishop. But what if I then defend my bishop? You, you take then, um... I think I'm then sacking the rook on f2, maybe. I don't know if it works. When would you like to do that? I don't know, like, um, maybe after, you, after knight takes. So knight takes, bishop takes, rook takes f2, and then yeah, you take the rook. Yeah, and then coming with check with the queen. Yeah. Yep, so my reply is forced. Yeah. And Maybe it, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I think I got the variation wrong. So what I did was I set the I set knight takes on g4, the bishop yeah. will take, then I set uh root takes f2 already, the king will take and then pawn, then I queen to g3. Okay, I must move my king back. Sorry, sorry. I, but I'm not sure the cost died. I can't see the move. So like, where does the king go? Uh, does the king take the, the rook sacrifice? I have to take the rook because you are threatening all sorts of checks. So I must take the rook. You're coming in with check and I go back to F1. F1 and then the root comes in, right? Yeah. Sure. And I block it. Okay. Um, then I will push a pawn. So it's pawn to H3. That is possible, but I think there's a faster way to win in that position. Wouldn't you check with the other rook? Sorry, what in so which position? You check with the other rook. Check, yep. And I block with my bishop. Bishop g4 to f3. And then Then maybe take with the bishop on e2. Well, in that case, I could maybe try to take the queen. And if you take on f3 the rook, then, then I'll just second my queen. And maybe I can try to survive there. Does it revolve around the g4 pawn because pawn to g4 is weakening, right, on the king side? That is correct. This this should be a trigger. Like when you see the pawn on g4, it's just so weak, and all of Black's pieces are swarming around the white king. So it's just a sign that there has to be a tactic. And you guys are in the right direction. You guys are going in the right direction. You just have to find one last move at the end. After I block with the bishop. One last move. Can you just capture the queen or capture the bishop with your queen because the pawn is pinned to the king? You could let, if you take with the queen, I'll play king e1. 
and I'm going to run away. That's my last trick. Oh, so you take with the rook? Take with the rook. Yep, and that's checkmate. Yes, very well done. So knight takes g4, bishop takes g4. Now rook takes f2. So black's threatening mate. Oh, and I should mention that I have to take this knight because you have this big threat of queen to h2 and then queen takes f2 checkmate. So I must take your, your knight. And now rook takes f2, you have multiple threats, queen g3 or queen h2. So I must take the rook, check, king f1, and rook f8, check. Bishop f3, and rook takes f3, mate. And it's important that this bishop hits this pawn, so you can't take the rook. And it's actually checkmate for you. As for other moves, just to show you, Bishop takes e2, I think, is not so good because I can take me with the king and perhaps run away. And I could try to expect my extra two pieces here. Should be winning for white. Or if queen takes f3 check, would be a mis this would be a mistake as well because king e1, and my king runs away. So rook takes f3 check is the best and cleanest way. So any questions? No? All right, let's go to the next one. Actually, this position came from a game that I played yesterday. And this position, I played knight takes e6. Now, is that a good move or a bad move? Basically, I'm trying to exploit this hanging rope. It's not that great, right? Because you'll check you back with the rook. So what's the move? Uh, if you give me a variation. If you, uh, knight takes e6, then rook d8 takes d2 check, and then you have to take the queen. Correct. That That is the problem. So rook d2 check. And now if you take, then you just take knight, and it's an extra minor piece. But we both had 20 seconds at this point, and my opponent just took the knight back. And of course, this was a mistake, because now I could have taken this rook, queen takes d8, queen takes e6 check, and now I'm attacking the rook. So after this king moves, I take everything. And it does gain the a2 pawn, so I have to settle for draw here. Which is actually a fair result, considering that my position wasn't very good at this point, and that's got a lot of advantages. But instead, I took this pawn, and after king h8, rook takes d8. And now, what's the best move for black? Rook, you maybe rook want to C2 check. Go. Yep, rook c2 check. In another intermediate move. Not the king h3, just take the rook. And that's an extra piece. You have an extra bishop here. Instead, my opponent just took the rook back, which is a huge blunder. And now I took the rook, 
and the queen d2 check, which is again another blunder. He should have taken this rook. And we will transpose to the previous variation that we saw. State of the king h3. I was just a lot of material up. Check g4. And black got made it. And Black was a pretty strong master as well, so shows that masters can make huge flounders. If anything. Right, so let's go to the next game. Try to find something a bit more challenging. Yep. This also came from a game that I played yesterday, and it's Black to Move. Sorry, who to move? I don't know. Black to move. Rick takes night. Yep, and now White has two replies. So please try to calculate what you're going to do against each one of those replies. So after rook takes c3, what can white do? White's a rook down. So white has two main replies. Or at least two replies that you should consider when you're right before you play rook takes c3. I guess white could check with the bishop. That's another that. possible move. Or just they might take the rook back with the b2 pawn. Yep. Or white could take on c5. So then defending this bishop and trying to take the rook back. So what would you do against each one of those replies? Let's start with taking the rook back. If you take on c3 and I take your rook, that should be the easiest one. Take the bishop. Yep, and you end up with bishop up. So that's easy. So now let's, now let's look at bishop takes b7. So what's your reply? Because you can just take the bishop with the rook. Yep. So that's quite easy as well. And lastly, what happens if white takes on c5, which was actually what I did in the game? Queen f4 check. Yep, exactly. So this was the move that I missed, queen takes f4 check. So rook takes c3 is a good move, removing the defender of bishop. Once again, you can find these moves if you look for the forcing moves. Are checks, so there are no checks. And then you look at captures, and then you should see this move. Rook takes c3. So if I take the rook, you just take the bishop, an extra piece. 
Should be seven doesn't help. Plus you just take with an extra rook. And black's got an extra bishop here, so it doesn't help. Now the D takes C5. This was my idea because I thought that Black's Queen would have to move and then I could take the bishop. Sorry, and then I could take the rook, and then I would win back my exchange. But black has queen takes f4 check. So this is very strong, and obviously I lost after rook c5. Black just defended everything, and I was a piece down. I had to resign in a couple of modes. Right. This, for this one, it's white to move. It's not a very difficult puzzle, but Black was a strong master and he fell straight for it. So you can try to punish Black's play. Rookie A check? Yes. Easy. But my opponent completely missed it. He was quite shocked at the beginning. He had to resign here, of course, because, because the point is, on a previous move, he had taken with his queen a pawn on c4, which is actually quite a cunning trap that I'd set. So the point being that if I now take the queen, then he takes my queen. And it's a fair trade for him. But by playing rook e8 check, I'm deflecting his rook, and now I just take the queen. And then it's an extra queen for me. So he resigns. Now let's go to some more difficult stuff. This is actually from one of my games from two years ago. And white had an advantage for basically the entire game. But, well, he just made a blunder with his previous move. It's not very obvious, but try to punish white's play. It's back to move. It makes it easier, I can flip the board. So once again, try to look for forcing moves. So look for checks, look for captures, and look for attacks on the opponent's pieces.
So what moves are you considering? Is it maybe pinning the knight to the queen, so moving the rook to c8? That is a candidate. But then, well, white's a strong master. And he allowed you to pin his knight. Does it smell like a trap to you? It might be trying to trap you, I guess, into taking in back rank checkmate. So after rook c8, what's white's reply? You have the right concept about the back rank. Um. I guess white could just even move the knight, it's like b5. And if the rook takes the queen, then there will be a checkmate on the back rank. But then the rook is also being attacked by the queen. Yeah, but in that case, I could say move my rook back. And it's not so bad for, for black, is it? It still has material equality. But you have the right idea of, of moving the knight. You just have to find the square to which you're going to move the knight. B6. Sorry? B6, maybe? B6, yes. Winning a pawn. Of course, you can't take the queen because white gives check and black is back rank mate. Back rank mate. It. Quite cunning, isn't it? So what other forcing moves do you have here as black? Remember, you should, you should consider all the forcing moves, no matter how absurd it might look at first glance, because if it wins, then it wins, and you don't have to calculate anything else. So what other forcing moves do you have? I was thinking of night G4. But I don't really see how he wins anything. Is that a knight? I'll move for queen to C2. But now look, his rook is protected, right? By the queen. So what if he just moves knight? Looks like an extra piece. But you have the right idea. I, I will tell you, I'll give you that. This idea with queen c2 is the right idea. You just have to find a way to get rid of white's queen. And then this idea would work. Echo. 
Yes. What a move. So the idea is, of course, if queen a4, then now Isaac's move queen c2 is very strong. And now white can't defend his knight and rook at the same time because his pieces are so badly placed. And black just wins. And if white can't take the pawn, that means black's going to take this pawn and that's going to have a really strong passed pawn here in b3. The game lasted only a few more moves. Knight a6. No, I took the pawn, of course. Knight c5. Queen c2. Takes, takes. Rook c1. And what's the final move here for black? Rook d8. Rook d8, yes. And weirdly enough, my opponent offered me a draw here, so obviously I didn't see this move. And Basically, he had to resign after this because if say rook f1, and I just go rook d1 and knight e4. And a possible continuation could be g3. Rook takes f1, king takes f1, check, deflecting the knight. After takes, now I queen with a winning position. So that wasn't an easy one, but yeah, quite impressive you managed to solve it in the end. Let's go to the next puzzle, which is the last difficult puzzle that I've prepared today. It's white to move. Yeah, so once again, start by looking for the most forcing moves.
So which moves are you looking at? Uh, stack the rook on d4. Yes, that is the most tempting move because, of course, the knight is so strong and you just want to eat it up. But of course, black can take the rook, so you have to evaluate that. And try to find a follow-up for white. And if you can find a follow-up, then that's good for white and you can play it. But of course, if you can't find a follow-up, then you have to look for a different move. I was looking at maybe um, uh, queen h4. Sorry, queen h4 now? Or... Maybe, yeah. Oh, but queen h4 doesn't really do anything, so. Yeah, but they're not. Um, I can, like... They're taking on f3, knight takes f3. I'm not yeah, sure it's yeah. good, but you should always take into account Black's resources. And usually if Black has a lot of these resources, then usually they, you can see that White's up a pawn, so you don't want to allow too much counterplay from your opponent. Yeah, but I will say this, that, um, well, Max and Isaac, both of you are on the right track. You just have to find a way to make your ideas work together. Well, I think it's very hard to evaluate what, what is Black's best move, so that takes time. Yes, that's the obvious move. Of course, start with rook takes knight, but then what's the follow up after black takes the rook? I was I was thinking of the queen to queen to h four because I removed the defender of the f four pawn. Yes, exactly. So that's of course of course black's black's a whole piece down now, so he must take the rook. He has no choice. And now queen h four is Max's idea. And this is very strong because now black's king is going to come under a really strong attack. But for instance, there's actually no way to defend the f4 pawn, surprisingly. But that can play queen e5, but yeah, this h7, and then all sorts of threats are coming in. And this is completely hopeless, of course. That should be designed. So black play queen g6. Now I took this pawn. And what's the final move? Is it check with the knight? Yes, that's the best way to do it. Because on the next move, there's going to be a deadly discovered check. So if you go king f6 and knight h4 check wins the queen. If you go to the corner, then I can go queen e5 check and make next move. So yeah. It's one of my proudest achievements in chess. One of my best games, for sure. So let's 
So any questions about this position or the previous one? No? All right. So let's finish off with an easy puzzle, relatively easy one. But this is, these are the kind of standard technical motives that you're going to get very often in online blitz games. So I think it's a good idea to solve a lot of these puzzles on a regular basis. So it's white to move. Bishop c4. That's not a good move, actually. I, I didn't take. That, oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, that was a bad. But actually, this works well because after king d2, your rook's trapped. Well, not trapped, but there is a threat of rook takes f7 mate. So that has to give up his rook, and this endgame is winning. But yes, well spotted. I didn't even consider this move, but this is very strong. Um, but there is another way to play, another typical way. So I'll try to see if you can find a, the second solution. Uh, I was thinking, uh, set, set the rook straight away, uh, rook on f7, and yep. then you fought with the bishop, and yep. then fast pawn. Yep. Now we are two pawns up. Black actually resigned here. And it's completely winning. Uh, bishop c4 was a nice spot. Good job from Max and Isaac, responding to these two wins. Right. I think we have right. We have one more puzzle, and this is actually white to move. This puzzle is a bit longer, but of course, if you use the same principles that we've been talking about for the past few puzzles, they should be quite straightforward. Is it just check with the knight because the pawn is pinned, so it can't recapture? And I guess you just win a rook, or or you can capture the pawn with the rooks after the king moves? That, yes, that is a possible solution, but there is something more beautiful and something stronger, which wins the game on the spot. After knight g6, black can maybe try to fight on for a little bit, but there's another move which just wins immediately. Push the pawn, and the rook is trapped. You must guard the pawn on h7. Yes, f6 is another good move, but yeah, you should also consider rook takes h7. Maybe we could try to calculate that. And there are lots of good moves here, but there is one very beautiful line that wins the queen. If you can find that, that would be very nice. Maybe like rook captures, rook captures, rook captures, king captures, queen h1, something like that. 
Yep, Vec has to play with his king. Yeah. And then king, I don't know if it's right, but then uh, king g, g7, queen h4, h5. Well, try to look for the most forcing move. Queen h5 probably wins, but you want to... You want to solve it in the cleanest way. The rook h7 is correct. Takes, takes, check, king g7. And what's the move for white? Oh, then push the pawn, actually. So. Yes. And no matter what black does, he loses the bishop, and then he loses the queen. So that's a very nice tactic. Check. And now f6. Basically decoying black to one of these dark squares. He only has two legal moves. Say so king takes f6, you have to take the bishop, and then you take the queen. It's a beautiful way to finish. Because if king f8 is the same thing, I just take the bishop, then I take the queen. Now, as you guys mentioned, the move knight g6 is also not too bad. You can just take this. Uh, this should be winning as well because the next move we just take this pawn and that's game over. Or f6 is, should be quite strong as well. But this is the most beautiful way to play, of course. Right, so any questions about this? No? All right, then. I think we're done for the day. Uh, thank you for attending this session. And before you go, you guys could just help me fill up this poll. I'm quite grateful.